I want to begin by introducing a term I haven't used with you before, but you need to, you need to start using this. The term is nutrigenomics. And what, what does that term mean? It's how dietary components, how things we eat, things we ingest, um, generally refers to food products, how they interact with the genome, that is the DNA that encodes all 25,000 of your genes, to regulate gene expression. So those genes are the blueprints for everything that you are, and you can be put together uh, by about 25,000 little unique machines. Some of them are unique to you. Nobody else has quite the same sequence. Others uh, we all have in common, and that's the blueprint that makes you who you are. So how things we eat can affect the expression of those blueprints, how the rate at which they're converted into the enzymes that they encode, the little machines that do the things you have to do. This word you all know already, <laughs> but what is it? What is protandum? And the definition actually has changed a bit in the last five years. In the beginning, what we thought protandum would be was an antioxidant supplement. Not a conventional one, but a, a different way of doing it. And that's no longer an adequate description. So this is what I want you to learn and want you to use as you describe protandum. Protandum is a nerf to activator in the nutrigenomics arena, all right? You may not have any idea what I just said, <laughs> but you have a job, you have an obligation to learn what this means. And I'm going to tell you in the, the rest of this presentation um, what some of those words mean. NRF2, NRF2, it's an abbreviation for something you don't even want to hear, but uh, it's a, lo a long <laughs> word. NRF2 is one of the key proteins in your body, in every cell in your body, that has the, the function of regulating your genome. Yeah, I said you have 25,000 genes that are expressed. NRF2 regulates about 2% of those, about 500 genes, some of which are turned up, some of which are turned down. You can think of every gene as having a dimmer switch, so just like the lights in your home, and you can turn them up gradually or down. It's not just on off, it's degrees. And NRF2 helps your body balance the expression, the regulation of all those 25,000 blueprints. How many copies do we need of this machine encoded by this blueprint? And NRF2 regulates that group, as I said, of 500 genes. They have something in common. They are termed generally survival genes, and they fall into three broad categories. Antioxidant enzymes, you've heard about superoxide dismutase catalase that protect you from oxidative stress. But another significant number of those genes are anti-inflammatory genes. They fight the process of inflammation in your body. And another group of them are antifibrotic genes. They mean they fight the process of scar tissue formation. You might think scar formation is a good thing, and if you cut your skin, it is a good thing. It heals quickly and keeps you from getting infected and keeps you from losing blood, all good things. But in internal organs, in your lungs, scar tissue is deadly. It's called pulmonary fibrosis. It's untreatable and it's fatal. If scar tissue occurs in your heart, <clears throat> it's called heart failure. It means your pump actually fails and you will die of heart failure. So taken together, these things protect cells in your body when they're in stressful situations. It may be due to trauma, maybe due to aging, it may be due to disease processes. But that group of genes all have the same kind of dimmer switch, and NRF2 is the protein that can reach those dimmer switches and turn them up or down. So it's responsible for that. It's been called the master regulator of antioxidant gene expression. So how does that work in a cell? This large green oval represents a human cell. 
And that little purple gizmo in the upper right, labeled a NERF-2 activator, is one of the five active ingredients in protanum. And so as that NERF activator approaches a human cell, it binds at a specific site, it's called a receptor on the cell surface. The analogy I'm going to use is if this big cell is your home, that NERF-2 activator just stepped on the front porch, and it did something, it pushed your doorbell, it rings, causes a reaction inside the house, in this case, inside the cell. What is that reaction? Well, if it were the doorbell, you may be sitting on the sofa watching TV, and suddenly you get up, you do something, you, you have a response. Inside this cell, the same thing happens. When Nerf 2 rings the doorbell, as it were, an enzyme called a kinase, and what it does is not terribly important, but it's one of these 25,000 gene products, and it's doing its job here to realize that Nerf 2 needs to be activated. So this NERF-2 activator, by activating the kinase, brings about a chemical reaction. And there you see a little round red protein labeled NERF-2. That's our signal molecule, messenger molecule. And it's being held inside the cell, but outside the nucleus by another protein here labeled KEEP-1. Because this kinase physically changes the NERF-2, and you can see there it's put a little yellow phosphate group on it. Change in structure. And that change brings about a release of NERF-2 from that blue protein that's been holding it out in the green part of the cell. Allows it to diffuse into the nucleus where all those genes are housed. And once in there, it has access to all those dimmer switches, the 500 that control the NERF-2 regulated genes. And so some of them will go up, some of them will go down, because NERF-2 has entered the vault where the blueprints are kept. And this may seem like, like hand-waving, it may seem like a fantasy. Every step of this is true. It's simplified a little bit, as you might guess. And if I showed you the real science, you probably would have trouble following it. But that's what happens. And the analogy is not much different than if somebody rings your doorbell, you get up, answer the door, it tells you, go to the kitchen, and you enter that room of the house. And once in there, you can turn on switches. That's what NERF2 does. And when those switches are turned on, these three groups of genes that I just talked to you about are up and down regulated, uh, depending on, on what they do. So uh, antioxidant enzymes are expressed, more antioxidant enzyme protection. Antifibrotic genes are expressed. Anti-inflammatory genes are expressed. And some genes are turned down, the ones that are pro-fibrotic and pro-inflammatory, because they're switches that cause things to happen and cause things not to happen. And the result is that cell is now protected from stress. 